So yeah, there's a thousand cyberpunk videos out there. This is something I know all too well, but everyone has their own perspectives and feelings on all the issues that surround this game, and I simply just want to share mine. This is my first official video on the channel, and although it may seem like I'm starting things off negatively, there's a positive message within. Cyberpunk is something that, in the past five years or so, I became obsessed with, to a degree. The design, setting, and world were tantalizing, so since my introduction, I've been interested in dystopian themes and movies. I've watched just about every dystopian movie out there, and I have to say, Waterworld is clearly my favorite movie. Hey! <laughs> so, fast forward to four days prior to release, and I start seeing videos and Reddit posts about everyone's excitement for this game. Look, we do this all the time. The hype builds to an extreme, Half-Life 3 for example, even though, sadly, it will never exist. But we end up setting expectations, exceeding set expectations, then proceed to foam with the mouth due to a hype OD about things that may or may not have been promised to us in the first place. But this was a little bit different. Or was it? All these characters, the world building, the nuances, etc. We were conditioned every time to believe that after all these E3 videos, pre-release demos, and delays, that in good faith, we'd be delivered the game that was promised to us. And we just simply weren't. There are too many glitches, broken mechanics, dusty AI, and error logs to count, but I would like to explore a few that I experienced myself. Now, since I play on PC, this is going to be a very specific review, because it's the only copy that I own. But I really didn't experience too many issues. To be honest, I really didn't experience any. I'm not running the strongest hardware either. I have a Lian Li TU-150 case, a Ryzen 7 2700X, a Radeon 5700XT, 32 gigs of RAM, and some NVMe SSDs. So it's really not like the highest end hardware, but it honestly allowed me to play it at 60 FPS pretty consistently on high settings prior to the first patch. I have no idea how this happened, but it did. Now, after the patch, I've been running it with even higher frame rates, and I'm pretty happy with that. But the few issues I did have did ruin my immersion. Entirely. I'm talking braindead AI, cars discovering their passion for parkour, missions failing to complete in general, and animations that are frankly right out of a Cronenberg film. It's just bad. Although these just touch the surface of the glitches, there are some glaring game design issues that bother me to this day. Movement. What is this? I've recently been playing Apex Legends, and I remember back to my Titanfall 2 days, and Titanfall days, frankly, and the movement was perfect. I had and have full control over myself and what I'm doing. Clamoring seems natural, and gunplay is just clean. Cyberpunk feels sluggish and outdated. When I run and attempt to slide, there is this massive delay between inputs, but that also applies to other movement mechanics in the game consistently. That's a simple problem, but speaks volumes for the degrading aspects of movement in general as we progress further into the game. Mods. This... This is just sad. These mods are like asking for a cookie dough blizzard and finding two pieces of cookie dough at the bottom of your ice cream. It tastes good, but it's just not enough. Whatever happened to the mantis arm wall climbing thing that we saw in the, in the demo or whatever it was a while ago? Whatever happened to the in-depth hacking? Whatever happened to game-changing mods besides the broken armadillo one that's just hilarious? Compared to Deus Ex, the mods and hacks are severely lacking and leave much to be desired. Which leads us to stealth. Once again, a major letdown. It's possible, and it's how I play the game currently, but the enemy AI is either way too stupid or way too smart. It's as if the game wasn't designed with this aspect of play in mind, even though we all know that it was. Half of the stealth abilities are pointless, and attempting a non-lethal playthrough is one, impossible because you kill people within the first three minutes of the game, and two, entirely pointless. The only reason to aim for a non-lethal encounter is when you're dealing with psychos, but that's only if you want a good rapport. It literally doesn't affect dialogue or any character interaction throughout the rest of the game. You're always viewed as a killer. AI. 
This is the last one I'll focus on for this video, but come on, man, seriously. I understand discretion, but is there a reason that the AI was mentally assaulted in the code? They're not only brain dead, but they literally don't do what was emphasized in the E3 trailer or announcement. They don't live. The city just barely feels alive. Try this. Find an NPC on the street, any, it doesn't matter. Follow this dude around, and that will help you understand what's really going on. They've been partially programmed while the other chunk was commented out in the code. Why? Well, we know why. The game needed much more time in development. At least a year. There was so much potential here. Look, I'm, I'm done. I gotta move on. I'm not sure how I forgot about this, but where the fuck is the customization? Why do my mods not affect my appearance? Why can I not really change my clothing or wear what the NPCs wear? Why can I not change my hairstyle five minutes after I start the game? We are modified humans for fuck's sake. Why can't I look like the cool bouncer outside of Moxie's? What? All of these changes can be addressed by CDPR, but the question is, will they fix it all? Is it even on their list of issues that need fixing in the first place? There were several issues with The Witcher 3 when it launched, but we saw how those issues were addressed. They did fix what they promised to. That is something we can rely on. CDPR does a great job of fulfilling their promises most of the time. We've also seen other games launch terribly. The Halo MCC comes to mind. Now, CDPR is far from an indie developer now, but they have made several games in the past and their support for those games, generally speaking, has been pretty solid. I believe we can expect the same from them on this since their investors are having a heyday with them at the moment. The last thing they want is bad PR around this game or their company although there's quite a bit at the moment. Look, my biggest fear is the focus the industry has on gaming right now. They go headstrong into live service games that either fail immediately or fail later on due to lack of support or end game playability. Destiny suffered from that in vanilla, but luckily they turned things around and drove that franchise into the wonderful direction it's currently in. We also see this drive to release games in a broken state only to fix them later on. I would much rather they delay a game by a year or more so we receive it in the condition it was meant to be delivered in. This half-baked bullshit is frustrating for the simple fact that we are paying for a product that is arriving broken and unplayable, especially for console players. Now, I used to have another channel, and on that channel I made a video discussing the importance of single player games. If you're interested in my thoughts at the time or the way that I felt about playing single player games and their importance into the industry. Go ahead and check that video out, I will leave it in the description below. I'm going to hijack my own video for a moment here. I recorded a, I guess you could call it, our first podcast with one of my closest friends and brothers, uh, Joe. Uh, I wanted his perspective on single player games versus multiplayer and his insight pinpoints exactly what most players feel. We just want a good story with solid mechanics that lead to an amazing experience. Like personally, I absolutely love single player games. Like I have my Steam list up right now and I only have the games, but I have like, I have 273 games on my Steam playlist. Jeez. And the thing is, is like most of these I ha I didn't pay for. Well, no, no, that's not true. Most of them I did pay for. I got them through like uh, deals or packs or discounts or whatever. But if you look through it, almost every single game in here is a single player game because I have something for stories, um, mm -hmm. I have something for uh, character development and plot, and I think some of the some of my most favorite games are Bioshock, beautiful story, absolutely beautiful story. Um, the Witcher series is amazing. Half Life is amazing, and all of these are single player games. But then there are a few like Halo, where you combine the two together, and even Titanfall did that, where they had the single player storyline, and then they had the multiplayer aspect and mm -hmm. i think what makes a game so popular and have so much depth to it is when you have you you have the single player aspect so you can say i understand these characters i know where they're from i get them and like even with apex like they have the stories on youtube and you can look into the background of each character you can see you know why wraith uh you know has portals and can look through dimensions and she hears voices and stuff you can understand why mirage is the way that he is because of these videos but if they had a single player experience unlike well yep. i want to say like like titanfall because it is from titanfall but we don't get to necessarily see those characters specifically if you had a storyline 
that included all those characters, you'd have a better and more intense connection with them, which would make you want to play the game even more. And then you've got exactly. the multiplayer aspect where you can play with friends. And I think that multiplayer aspect is what gives it the 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 more broader or grandiose kind of feel because it's like okay well now i can play with people across the world and we have the same interests we have the same um connections and it's it's like it's what creates those stories where you hear people say like uh like how i met evan for example where it's like you know i exactly. started playing games with this person and you know I, I see it all the time like you know hey i just you know i just had a wedding and i was finally able to meet the people i've been playing xbox with for the past 13 years it's like oh my gosh like this is cool that you can actually bring all these people together through a video game yep networking bro it's just another it's just another form of networking mm -hmm. that people don't even realize that they're doing until those connections are, are made um like when like the, i mean the story about you know how you met evan uh is probably like one of the best like start of a friendship stories i've ever heard in my life because it's like yo that's super dope the way that happened it's super i random. thought about that like two days ago yeah like seriously, I was like, I came across my mind. I don't know how, I can't remember what I was doing, but I, it like just popped into my head. And I was like, yo, the way that he met Evan is dope. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that wouldn't happen if it wasn't for gaming. It wouldn't happen if it wasn't for multi, uh, uh, um, multiplayer matchmaking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And stuff. And like you're saying, I think you. I think you summed it up the best best way possible bro which is the games that are single player and multiplayer are make for some of the best games like the most legendary or iconic games because those games yeah. you can go and you can get that that depth or that understanding of the character which makes you want to actually put more time into the character now i think i'm going to release the full episode at a later date I'm not sure how I'm going to edit it yet, but if you'd like to hear us ramble on about Oedipus from the Odyssey, Ninja's weird Trits experience, and other random thoughts, just let me know. All right, back to the uh, mini launch review. I really appreciate you listening to me ramble about shit that ultimately doesn't matter, but it's been fun, and I'm glad that I'm able to start up a new channel where I can be myself. The channel name is December Grown, as I'm sure that you can deduce as to why you were born in August. Are you serious? Yep. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Look, this guy doesn't do videos often, and to be honest, they're probably not going to be very good. So enjoy it while you can. Okay, are you done? Yeah. Thank God. Yeah.